What's up guys and welcome to my channel. I am Missy Renee and on this channel we talk about manifesting. All things manifesting. How to do it, how to properly apply it so that you can finally get all that cool shit you really want. And in this video I want to really hone in and go over the topic of beliefs because I really do believe that this is a, a topic that really isn't talked about enough in the manifesting community and B, I really do think that this is where for those of you who are new to manifesting and just stumbling across these teachings, this is where I believe you should be focusing your attention and efforts first. Because something that I notice that happens quite often is for those that are new, they will immediately try to dive into the techniques and the practices to get a certain thing, be it a person, be it a lot of money, etc. And what typically happens is if after they do these techniques after they follow these practices, if things don't go the way that they may try to assume them to go, or if it doesn't happen as quickly as they like, there's usually a reaction and it's usually not a positive one. And what follows is either wallowing in despair and thinking that something's wrong, or two, thinking that they're doing something wrong, or three, thinking that all of this is BS and just dismissing the law entirely. Now I want to say for the record that I am not saying any of this to criticize or to try to make anybody feel bad. It's not taking aim at anyone in particular or any type of person because Lord knows that I was guilty of this for a long time. Anytime I'm pointing those things out that makes it sound like you're doing something wrong, it's really just to shed a light on ways that you can avoid any hiccups or hindrances. And if I come across as judgmental or holier than thou, know that that is never my intention. And I always say these things and it's always coming from a place of love and wanting to see you live your best life and maybe avoid some of the trial and error that I myself went through. So wanted to get that off the bat right away. So that said, I have been thinking about this video and the concept of beliefs for a long time. And really I can't stress how important it is to do this step first and to really take a look at what might be going on in your mind when you first getting started before just diving right into the techniques. And I also want to note to stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to be going over not just how to change these beliefs that you may have that are hindering or stopping your manifestations, but I'm also going to give you a couple tips and techniques to try to find what these beliefs may be because that is a question that I get a lot and that is how do I find out what these subconscious beliefs might be? How do I try to un unpack and uncover them so to speak? And that's a great question honestly because a lot of the beliefs that we carry with us have been programmed and have been running in the background so to speak, for a very long time. So it could be sometimes difficult <laughs> to really understand what's going on. And when hearing about this concept of beliefs and limiting beliefs as they're sometimes referred to, how to find out and laser point where they are so they can be uprooted. Because like I said, a lot of these beliefs we've been carrying around for a long time some of which we've been carrying around since childhood. And actually that is where a lot of the programming begins. <laughs> we are taught at a very young age when our minds are very impressible 
when we're children, our minds are like sponges and everything is impressible and we don't really have the conscious mind built up yet. It's all what we take in during the first few years of our life, like the first five to seven years of our life is just taking in experiences to help form our conscious mind, our self-identity. That being said, step number one in finding these beliefs and finding these programs, so to speak, is to note the beliefs of your parents and note the assumptions of your parents because these are the people who obviously have shaped us the most. Not just parents, uh, these can be mentors, these can be other family members, but any adults that helped teach you and instill these beliefs, it's typically a pattern that runs down the generations because what your parents taught you, they were taught by their parents who were taught by their parents and so on and so forth. So for example, if your parents always stress the importance of having to work really hard so you can make good money, that's probably a belief that's still running in the background of your subconscious to this day. Anything like that. And this can go for anything. This goes for money, this goes for a career, this goes for relationships, but generally where it starts is with those who raised us and they teach us what they know and that is what they were taught by their parents and their parents and so on so try to look back at what your parents taught you and even your grandparents because you'll find that there's probably a lot of similarities there it really does become a generational pattern so step one note the beliefs and the assumptions that your parents have another tip and this one is important and I want you all to take note on this one because I really don't see enough people talking about this. I don't know if I've ever <laughs> seen anybody touch on the topic of intuition. Yeah, intuition, what we understand it as isn't what is actually going on. And let me, let me break it down for you. What we assume and believe is intuition or that gut feeling that we get is actually a belief. It's a belief. And that gut feeling that we usually get usually starts going off when we try to do something or think a certain way that goes against that conscious belief. And usually that gut feeling is that resistance that is being met. For example, on this one, say you are getting ready to go on a date and you start getting a gut feeling that comes up and maybe it's a not so pleasant one and you try to ignore it, you try to shut it off and then you go on the date, maybe the date turns out to be disastrous. Maybe the guy was a total jerk, maybe things just went completely awry, maybe it was just kind of shitty. For whatever reason, what we will tend to do in these situations is look back in hindsight and say, you know, man, I should have listened to my gut and my intuition because it was trying to tell me not to go on the date. It was trying to warn me not to go on the date because I was feeling like something bad was going to happen right beforehand, right? These are usually what we perceive and what we think after the fact. But what really happened is you had a belief and in this scenario, in this example, that belief could be that all guys are jerks or all women are jerks <laughs> or, you know, I never have any luck with women or any luck with men or that dates always go horrible for me. I mean, th these are just some examples for this scenario, but when you started getting ready for that date, you were going against that belief that you carry and that's where that gut feeling or resistance was felt. And then sure enough, it played out exactly how you'd imagined it would go or how you assumed it would go because our conscious mind is constantly feeding our beliefs and assumptions into our subconscious, which then 
refracts and materializes in our 3D world. So pay attention to these gut feelings because this whole concept of intuition is actually a belief. So take note whenever you start to get that gut feeling. This always usually surrounds something important to us, whether it's a relationship, whether it's money, could be anything. But those gut feelings and those hunches and that intuition, so to speak, is actually a belief that you're carrying. Another example would be if you have a gut feeling that your significant other's cheating on you, and then you find out that they're cheating on you, it's because you had a belief that played out. So take a look at these assumptions, take a look at these gut feelings when they pop up and really ask yourself, where is this stemming from? You know, where is this coming from consciously? Like, why am I having this weird gut feeling right now? What, what could be the underlying cause here? And really like go in and try to dissect and dismantle what's going on because ultimately what you're trying to do here is what Neville described in his fundamentals. And by the way, I made a video on the fundamentals that Neville spoke about. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. I will link it up here. I will also link it down in the description box below. But when Neville was talking about what he described as the fundamentals to the law and to manifesting, number one, first and foremost, was self-observation. And that was taking a critical, non-judgmental look at the self and really taking a step back and just observing how you react and the thoughts that play out on your day-to-day, -day, the inner conversations that you have, because these all pinpoint exactly to what your beliefs are and what your assumptions are. And whatever those beliefs and assumptions are is gonna determine the state that you dwell in or the reality that you experience. And I talk about beliefs and I say all this to say that for those of you that are new to manifesting and for those who are just learning about Neville's teachings and the techniques and the practice, you may find that although you do the techniques and you may visualize, you may use your imagination in the state akin to sleep and you may get the thing that you want. And ultimately if you impress your subconscious mind, it will play out in your 3D world. It will materialize. It will take whatever is impressed and refract it in our outside world. That will happen. That is the law and that is the subconscious mind's job. That's what it does. However, that said, if your manifestation goes against your beliefs that have been programmed, some of them for a very long time, if your manifestation goes against your beliefs, you may find that things won't pan out the way that you want them to, or that your manifestation goes away. And I speak about this from personal experience, along with hundreds of other testimonials, if not thousands. The goal here is to make manifesting a lifestyle and to really create a lasting lifestyle for bringing about the world that you want and to be able to really use your powers in a way that benefits you because you wanna keep the things that you manifest, right? You, you wanna keep the things that you desire. You want them to hang around. And I really do believe that this is why Neville stressed the importance of self-observation and mental diet first and foremost, because if what you're trying to manifest goes against a belief that you carry, you may have trouble manifesting it at all. And even if you are able to impress and it materializes and you get that manifestation, you may have trouble keeping it around. And this is exactly why, for example, lottery winners, a third of them will be bankrupt and completely broke within 10 years, which is insane to think about, but also really makes sense. A lot of people who play the lottery are, you know, middle class, lower middle class, or even poverty level. 
for a lot of them, they're not able to change their mindset about money. So even though they come into a lot of wealth, even if they get very wealthy, they find that because of their beliefs around money, even when they come into a large windfall of cash, they will ultimately find themselves reverting back to their previous state or the one that is dominated by your beliefs. And this will happen to all of us, and this goes for everything. Your state is determined by your mindset. It's determined by your beliefs. It's determined by your assumptions, your reactions, your, the inner conversations that you carry. All of that will determine the state that you dwell in. And for a lot of these lottery winners, they didn't come from that wealthy mindset. They were never able to move themselves into that wealth state or wealth mindset. And what will ultimately happen if they don't change the mindset and change the belief is they will revert back to what they've always known, which for a lot of them is poverty. Okay, I think I've gone on long enough. <laughs> so how do we change our beliefs. We've already gone over a couple of techniques that we can use to help us find these beliefs and what they may be, but how do we go about changing them? You change your belief the same way that you change anything else, through your imagination. Using your imagination to manifest is something that Neville talked about constantly. He pressed this constantly, and this is his most popular technique by far. And essentially what you're going to want to do for this, once you have taken note of the beliefs that you carry and the things that you want to have uprooted and overwritten, so to speak, once you have those notes, you want to construct a mental scene. Construct a mental scene that will show you as the opposite of that belief. And you do this by creating a quick scene to play out in your imagination. It doesn't have to be long. In fact, don't make it long. Keep it about five seconds. And just construct a quick dialogue between you and a loved one. It could be a close friend, family member, whatever. It doesn't matter. And you can be in this imaginal scene either talking to them face to face or over the phone. But construct a scene that implies that you are the opposite of this belief or whatever it is that you want to have reprogrammed. So say for example, you have a belief about money that you have to work really hard for money and that money is hard to come by. To overwrite this belief, you can construct a scene where you are talking to a close friend and in that conversation, you can hear your friend say, wow, Missy, I don't know how you do it, but you need to tell me your secrets about money. It seems like you're making money hand over fist. Your success is inspiring. You, you have to tell me how you do it. To which you can reply, yeah, I know. It's wonderful how every dollar that I spend, I just get $5 back. Money really does just come to me easily and effortlessly. I really do have that lucky Midas touch. And once you have that scene, once you have that dialogue, and it doesn't have to be word for word what I just said, that's just to give you an example. And obviously it's gonna change depending on the scenario, but once you have that scene, you will want to get yourself into the state akin to sleep, which for those who don't know, it is that twilight window right before you fall off into sleep, right before you are unconscious, where you're drowsy and you're deeply relaxed and it's this meditative, almost hypnotic state. And you're naturally in this state twice a day, right before bed and right when you're waking up in the morning before you're fully alert and conscious. And we wanna get ourselves here because these times are when the mind is most impressible. And what I mean by that is your conscious mind will have its guard down because it's getting ready to wind down and drift off to bed. But your subconscious mind 
works 24 7. your subconscious mind never shuts off or never slows down so when your conscious mind has its guard down that's when your subconscious mind is the most impressible because your conscious mind during the day when you're alert and awake acts as a gatekeeper to the subconscious mind so it'll reject any ideas or beliefs that doesn't go with it that doesn't fall into your personal identity your personal beliefs etc so you get yourself into the state akin to sleep and you have your mental scene you have your imaginal scene and when you are in that state after you have wound yourself down you're nice and relaxed you've shut off all the outside senses you're going to want to bring that scene into your imagination and you're going to play that scene over and over you're going to loop it and you're going to loop it and you're going to loop it and this is going to take at first just at first it's going to take a little bit of effort because your mind is naturally going to want to wander off it's going to want to go all over the place so it's you're going to need to wrestle it down you're going to need to reel it back in and every time that you may wander just bring it back to the scene and just keep looping it and you're going to find after after struggling a little bit for the first couple minutes it'll get easier and then you're just going to loop the scene and every time that you loop it you're going to want to try to add extra tones of reality to it every time that you loop it you add in taste touch smell sound sight you want to give it as much sensory vividness as possible and you'll note after you've been looping it and after you've been giving it all the tones of reality that you can muster you're going to start naturally feeling the emotions that come with the scene as if you were there in real life so you're going to start naturally feeling that excitement you're going to start feeling that satisfaction you're going to start feeling that relief you're going to start feeling that feeling of like i'm a total badass and i'm awesome that's going to naturally follow the looping of this scene one quick note about your mental scene just to make sure that you're doing this properly and correctly make sure you're always seeing things from first person point of view so in the scene you are watching it through your own eyes as if you were like in that scene you don't ever watch it in third person like you're watching a movie of you and your friend no it's got to always be from first person point of view so always through your own eyes and you keep looping that scene until you drift off to sleep and what you're gonna find is not long after you do this you're gonna feel a shift in you in in your day-to-day -day life you're gonna start to feel more confident you're gonna start to feel more at peace you're gonna start to feel any old lingering fears or doubts or anxieties start to dissipate and go away i mean it's miraculous and like everything else i will always encourage you guys to try it don't ever take my word for any of my videos my sayings try it you be the judge yourself because the results are incredible and there's really no way to put it into words that do it justice so try this technique use it for anything that you find is a belief that is holding you back and construct a conversation construct a scene where you are the opposite of that belief the second way to change a belief and i save this till last because it's my favorite is to revise it go back and revise your memories now if you haven't seen my video yet on revision i'm gonna link that guy up here also down in the description box below but definitely definitely check that video out if you haven't seen it yet or if you don't know what i'm talking about when i talk about revision and this technique but this technique changed my life this and imagining in the state akin to sleep were it i mean this changed everything for the better so revision is essentially rewriting a past event or a memory to play out the way that you would have wanted it to go instead so you're taking a memory or something that happened to you in the past and in your imagination you are instead changing it to where it played out the way you would have rather it played out and i know this sounds completely bizarre 
but don't take my word for it. Try this technique yourself because what it does is, and you will find this if you try it, is when you revise a memory, your future scenarios will play out based on the revised memory versus the old memory or the old story. So in this case, when it comes to beliefs, try to go back as far back as even your childhood. I know I did this and was met with phenomenal results. I mean, miraculous results, but go back over your memories, as many as you can recollect, as far back as your childhood even, and take the ones that really stand out that you feel really shaped you as a person. And these are usually like big events. And for a lot of the not so great beliefs, a lot of the negative beliefs or limiting beliefs, they may be associated with a memory that is not so pleasant. And I know a lot of people are scared of this technique in a way or hesitant to try it because it could be hard to relive bad memories. A lot of us have been through a lot of trauma and a lot of very stressful situations that we would rather not ever relive in a million years. But I assure you what happens here is when you revise a memory and when you go into your imagination while in the state of kind of sleep, if you go into your imagination and you rewrite that memory to where it played out in a positive way or in a way that you would have wanted it to go, it's gonna change your trajectory. And when that happens, not only is your future circumstances gonna change, but the beliefs that were formed from that event will dissipate because if that event never happened, you would have never formed those beliefs in the first place. Anyways, guys, that is my video for today. I just felt it's so crucial to talk about this subject and to really give you guys some tips, some pointers, and some techniques to try to not only find and uncover these limiting beliefs, these subconscious beliefs, but how to overwrite or change them. Because you're gonna find that once you go through and delete these subconscious beliefs, you get a clean slate and you're able to, for me, it removed everything that was holding me back and my manifestations started coming in like that, like that, like that. It was like a dam that burst open. I can't put it into words, but this is why Neville stressed the importance of self-observation because in order to completely change your life, you have to get rid of the old story. You have to detach yourself from the old person that you were. Like you have to completely shift into a new being. You cannot manifest and be the things that you desire while clinging on to your old beliefs and your old patterns. So I hope this video helps. If you liked it, if you found it informative, if you found it helpful, then go ahead and give it a thumbs up <laughs> and don't forget to hit subscribe, hit that bell icon so that way you are notified every time I put out new videos, which is Sunday, I'm sorry, <laughs> which is every Wednesday through Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you're interested in checking out any of my other resources, I will go ahead and link my coaching website my blog and my social links down in the description box below. So check them out. And if you have any questions for me about this video, about beliefs or anything that you want me to talk about in future videos, leave them down in the comments. And until next time, you guys take care. Remember you are God and you can do anything you want. Happy manifesting.